Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Batman from The Dark Knight. This is not my favorite Batman franchise. I'm not a huge fan of the Christian Bale franchise. However, this figure is particularly impressive. Uh, it's not perfect. There are definitely some things we need to talk about, but I really like some of the ideas they had with this guy. And most of the execution is really well done, and he comes with a fair bit of accessories. So all in all, it might be the best Christian Bale Batman figure. Um, short of Hot Toys, I don't know about those very much, but um, the, the Christian Bale ones. But uh, overall, this might be the best. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. And this guy stands just about six... Just over six and a half inches, probably like six and five eighths. It's just a little bit over halfway. And that's just shy of 17 centimeters. So he does have a little bit of size to him. He's not quite as small as some of the other imports. So that's pretty cool. And I have to tell you, right off the bat, he's aesthetically very pleasing. They did a really good job with the finish on this guy. As you can see, almost all of the black is at least a matte uh, I guess you could say that it's satin because it's not entirely flat, but it's definitely not glossy and I wouldn't even go as far as to say satin. So I like that a whole lot. And then you do see throughout, hopefully it's showing up on camera, maybe even better than in person. We do have a lot of that gunmetal metallic mixed in throughout. So that looks really, really nice and it gives it a really nice appeal. And then the belt has the gold, of course, with the silver accents and it's very nicely done, very nicely detailed. And it's all continued throughout on the back. So hopefully you can see that without the cape blocking it. Very, very nicely executed. As far as the paint job for the head, it is the uh, tampography style dot matrixy type thing where the mouth has all that shading and, and detail built into it. Uh, it looks really, really good. And I think the sculpt is nice. I definitely recognize the uh, Christian Bale-ness of the, of the paint job and of the sculpt. And then the eyes also look very nice. I love it. Okay, so before we get into the figure anymore, I've already gone too far, let's talk accessories. We have two interchangeable heads. We have the normal head and one with the mouth that's a little bit open. It's kind of an odd amount of open, but it still does look nice and it's nicely executed. So uh, I guess it's good for like an action pose. It's a little bit less neutral, but it's not quite teeth gritted. It's not quite open. It's not quite closed. It's a little strange, but I do like it. And uh, I will note that on my uh, neutral head, the, the package left kind of like a, a glossy spot across the top of the forehead, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, we do have a whole bunch of different hands. We have two fist hands that come on him in the package, two uh, gripping hands, two battering gripping hands, two tightly clenched hands that are meant for holding a, a gun. Then we have hands that are open, meant for holding a gun. And then we have two wide open hands. So a whole bunch of different options can definitely hold all of his accessories which include his two batarangs, which are nicely sculpted and painted. And then we also have this goofy gun that he had in the movie, which looks like just a bunch of uh, mechanical parts that doesn't actually do anything, but I guess it does. But it's very nicely detailed. It's sculpted well and painted very nicely. You can see all the little rivets and things. Looks really cool. And then we have his more classic looking grapnel gun, which is also very nicely detailed. It's a really sharp sculpt with a lot of clean paint application on there. So that's pretty awesome. And I guess you could count the holster for the grapnel gun as an accessory because it does come off his belt if you want it to, but it's not, it's not technically an accessory. Okay, so before we get into the figure, I do want to talk about the cape, because the cape on this guy is a cloth cape, and that is notoriously problematic for a lot of companies. Now, I do like a lot of the things they did with this. First of all, the material is nice. It's a nice thin material, but it doesn't look, op or it does look opaque. It's not very translucent unless you have harsh lights. And even then, I doubt you guys can even see my fingers, maybe just barely. So it's very, very nice. It's a really, really tight knit, so or weave, whatever the official term is, I'm not sure. So it looks really good in scale, and then it does have the uh, shaped bottoms with the Batman scallops so that's really cool and it does have wires in it and this is one of the things that i really like about it other than it's the right shape for the movie it's like the perfect batman shape for that movie it's not too big not too small it has four wires in it we have one on either end and then we have two going down the middle where the seams are so that does help you in posing i love that they included that that's that's a really great thing However, the one issue I have with this cape, well, there's kind of two. One's both a good thing and a bad thing, and one's just not so great. Uh, the first thing is that the wires do not actually insert into the body anywhere. They're just in the cape. So you can't really pose it like this because they'll just fall down no matter how you bend it. So you'd have to start that bend back here somewhere so that it actually holds the pose 
and so that's okay. It's not a terrible thing, but anytime the wire isn't actually inserted into the figure and held in place, it will limit some of the usefulness of that wire. And so the same is true for these ones back here where they're just starting mid cape, not mid, but you see what I mean? So they won't be able to hold out like that. You'll have to bend them out like that. So it's not ideal, but it's definitely better than not having them at all. Then the second thing is something that I really like, and it's also not so great. The wires are actually flat pieces of metal. And the reason they do that is because if you have just a wire and then you bend it, the cape can rotate around that and then the bend won't hold the cape how you want it. So having the flat piece, it's fixed in place. It can't go anywhere. So once you bend it, the cape is going to stay there. So that's good in that regard, but it also does limit the bendability because you can't bend it against. So like if this is the sheet of metal, obviously I can bend it like this but I can't bend it out to the side. So it does limit it to an extent, but it's still, overall, it's really well executed and the problems are not inherently bad. They're just not as good as they could have been. So I like that a whole bunch and it does look really nice. So that's cool. So now let's go ahead and get into the figure. The head is on a double ball peg and it moves around really, really well. You have great range and of course you do have gapping, but you can't really avoid that too much if you want that extra range. So uh, me personally, I like kind of a, a mix of the two where it's a little bit less gappy and a little bit less range, but a lot of people are going to prefer the range. So that's going to come down to what you like, but it does pose really well. And the neck is also on a ball peg. It's very stiff, but it will move around and it will allow you to get the head into some really nice poses. So that's pretty good. And I like the fact that the neck isn't huge, like on the uh, Mafex Ben Affleck Batman. That drove me nuts. Then for the shoulders, we have some really nice shoulders. We have a butterfly joint in there, traditional butterfly joint, which does bring the arm out pretty far, so that's pretty cool. We have our traditional ball hinge, which lets the arm just go all the way out there, no problem at all. It's on a ball peg, so if you go too far, it'll just pop off, and it's on a hinge. It's very, very nice. It won't get in the way, and if it does, it just pops off, so you don't have to worry about anything. And then the other thing about the arm is it's on a ball peg like your standard figure arts. So ball peg on top of a butterfly with a ball hinge, hinge with a ball peg and a hinge for the shoulder pad and a traditional bicep swivel. It's got every bit of articulation you could want in the shoulder. I love that. I was a little bit worried about these bulkier shoulder pads, but they've executed them very nicely. I like that. We have a double jointed elbow, which gives us really good range and it's not bad. It's not real ugly. It doesn't have too much of that mechanical look to it as we've seen sometimes on these kind of figures. So pretty happy about that. The uh, forearm blades, by the way, are done really well. It's got the two rows of them. They're a harder plastic, so they are kind of spiky, so be aware of that, but they do look great, so that's awesome. For the wrists, we have our little tiny ball hinge, so be careful with that, but I don't feel like it's going to break, but it is very, very tiny, and so it doesn't look too bad because the wrists do overhang the hinge a little bit, but it will limit posability to an extent, but it's probably still going to be good enough. For the upper torso, it feels like it's just a single ball peg. Uh, I can't feel any offset or hinge in there, and I can't really see in there, so I can't say for 100% certain, but it feels like a single ball peg. It doesn't lean back very far, and he leans forward just a little bit. So it's not the, not the most incredible range, but it's definitely good enough. Uh, would I prefer more? Obviously, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary. It will lean side to side also, only probably about 15 degrees, if that, but... It will help in your posability. The swivel in the upper torso, without forcing it, only goes that far, so off center, maybe 15, 20 degrees. But you do have the lower torso, which will give you your full swivel. And then, of course, it's a ball peg, so it leans all over the place, too. Not so far forward, but pretty much every other direction. So it's, it's not probably going to be the most posable figure in your collection, but for a Christian Bale Batman, it's definitely going to be good enough because he basically just stood straight up the whole time. For the hips, I really like these hips because they don't look too bad like this, but they do have the hinged ball peg in there. They don't drop down a ton, but you can see it does give you a little bit more of a gap. So you can bring the leg pretty far forward. This one's really stiff. I was already doing it with this one, so I'll do it here. So you can bring the leg pretty far forward, almost all the way, which is really nice. And then going out to the side, we're not going to get full on splits, but it's pretty darn close. So that is pretty good. Also, you have your thigh swivel right underneath that ball socket. So between that ball socket and the rest of the hinges and everything, it works really, really nicely. For our knee, we have a double jointed knee, which gives you 
almost full bend, which is really good. And then it is sculpted inside. There's a little bit of a gap in there, but this is textured and it, this is textured and it doesn't look too bad. I like that it kind of gives you that, that proper knee bend look from the profile, so that's pretty cool. Would be better without the gap, but it's not terrible. It's definitely not a bad knee joint. For the ankle, we are a little bit limited in that it's just a ball peg. I guess it technically could be a double, but it doesn't move like it, so I'm not sure. But it's very limited going forward. That's about it. And then going back, almost not at all. And then ankle rocker, eh, just a little bit. It's, I mean, it's not terrible, but... Uh, with a ball peg, you're almost always this limited, and so it is. Then lastly, we have a toe hinge, which isn't the best. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's just kind of, it's there. It's okay. So there it is. So yeah, it's not a perfect figure by any means, but it is damn good, and I am very, very pleased with it. In fact, like I said, I don't like these movies that much, and I like this figure a whole lot. It's a very nice addition to the collection. Even if you're not a Christian Bale Batman fan, this figure is a fun one to have. So I have to recommend it. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you come back for that. Turn on notifications so you don't miss any of it. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And in the meantime, keep collecting.